Did you know that there's a clinical study, it was just recently published that showed you exactly how to reduce your biological age, something that everybody can do, by over two years, about two and a half years, within just six to 12 months? This is a breakthrough study that I want to share with you called the TRIM study. The TRIM study for longevity is actually multiple TRIM studies. I want to share with you exactly what they did, why it worked, and how you can add it to your own anti-aging protocol. Plus, I want to show you the natural-based version, the version that I choose to use instead of using any pharmaceutical-based drugs. But if you're not familiar yet with the biological age is versus chronological age, it's so much more important to focus on biological age. We can't slow down the number of calendar-based birthdays we have, right? So as I see my calendar days just keep on ticking, what I'm more concerned about is how do I feel? right? Am I aging a one for one with every year? Am I getting one year older or is my biological age less? And so right now my biological age is about 15 years less than my chronological age. And what this allows me to do is actually feel like someone in their early 30s rather than late 40s. Why this makes a difference is that if you're looking to continue your exercise or work schedule or you know really being able to have energy for your kids and run around, all those things, it matters. Plus, I want to be able to recover from exercise or workouts or just being able to walk 5, 10 miles a day if I'm out and not have to worry about all those inflammatory-based repercussions. So I'm going to share with you the exact study here. I just think that it's important for everybody to look to lower their biological age because no matter what, no matter how long you live, you get to live with more life during those years. You do have more energy. Your brain stays younger, longer, and you're not dealing with all of the, the inflammatory-based pain and joint issues that a lot of people have. So this was a small study, but, but I've, this is one of many studies I've shared with you as part of High Performance Health, and it looked at essentially a 12-month timeline. Average age in this was about 51 to 65 years old. It was done with men, and men are usually they age faster than women. And I'm going to share with you exactly what worked, what was the most helpful. But the nice thing is, is that even with individuals that weren't trying to live a healthy lifestyle and like that, they were able to reduce their biological age by 2.5 years based on the Horvath clock, epigenetic clock. If you want to test yours, we'll link up the biological age test that you can run. Anybody can run this right at home with a simple finger prick or saliva sample. That's at stephencabral.com slash 35 55. That's today's show, I believe. StephenCabral.com slash 3555. Three fives. All right. So let's get right into it. What do they use? Well, the first one is this. They used human growth hormone. Now, again, you know that I don't use human growth hormone myself. I don't use any pharmaceuticals, but I want to share with you what we can do instead of using HGH, or some people might decide to say, yeah, I'm going to use HGH. The second one that they used was metformin. Metformin is another drug. It's able to reduce glucose levels and improve overall insulin sensitivities, which helps with mTOR and IGF-1. The third one they used was DHEA. And DHEA is also very powerful for not just a hormone precursor like for testosterone or estrogen, but it's actually very powerful to help balance cortisol and improve the overall immune system. So what it targeted was the endocrine system, which is hormones. It's going to use DHEA. It used, it targeted insulin-based resistance, and it's using metformin, and then immune-based issues with growth hormone and what's called immune senescence, and it's using growth hormone, not at a mega dosage, but to improve the thymus, and the thymus is so powerful at helping with natural killer cells for cancer and much more, T cells, etc. So it wasn't one silver bullet that they looked at in this study, which is why I liked it and wanted to bring it to you, but it was multifactorial, because Reducing biological age and improving aging in general is never going to be do this one thing. This one thing cures everything. It's just simply not the case. So by supporting hormones, or in this case, let's say human growth hormone, we can overall boost that thymic-based activity. And when you add the DHEA, you're able to improve overall immune system. One of the biggest issues with aging, though, is that a lot of people's hemoglobin A1C starts to creep up and up and up. So on your blood work, if you or the stress mood and metabolism test, and I can link that up here today, 
If you start to see your hemoglobin A1c reach 5.5, it's cause for concern. It doesn't mean you have type 2 diabetes, but it does mean that your average resting glucose levels is starting to creep up above 99 or 100. And that's important to look at because so much of weight loss, body transformation, inflammation, aging, et cetera, is due to maintaining healthier levels of insulin resistance, but actually insulin sensitivity. Now, this does not mean that your blood sugar isn't allowed to jump up after a meal. It is. We see, again, hundreds of thousands of people every single year. People respond differently to foods and carbs. But if your blood sugar comes down within three hours of a meal, and it shows good, strong insulin sensitivity. It might jump. We see people's hemoglobin A1C at a 5.1. Like there's no issues at all with that individual. And especially that's how their body's been reacting for decades now. So again, could we look at their food and dial it in a bit more? Sure. But it does not seem to be an issue with their overall physiology if that fasting glucose is below a 95 when they're awake and also that their hemoglobin A1C is below a 5.5. That's what we look for in our practice. Of course, you want to blow a 5.7 in conventional medicine, but in our practice, we like it at 5.5 or lower. Okay, so let's go over a few ways that I think we can do this a little bit more naturally than the study itself. I'm not about to start injecting myself with HGH, human growth hormone. Instead, what I'm going to do is improve my overall resistance training exercise, two to three times a week of weight training, which is also going to then improve my deep sleep at night. So getting into bed earlier, I'll use my full spectrum magnesium. I'll use my adrenal soothe and a little bit of liquid melatonin before bed. That's what I do. And it allows me to get my 75 to 90 minutes of deep sleep at night. When that happens, especially the first half of the night, growth hormone levels rise naturally. So that's what I want. I also want to stop eating three to four hours before bed. And so all of that's really, really helpful. Again, I could go on and on about other nutritional supplements, but I don't want to make this a nutritional supplement show. So just a few that I named right there are very helpful. The adrenal soothe, which contains the ashwagandha, the L-theanine, the phospholocholine to lower cortisol, the full spectrum magnesium to lower, to improve, well, to lower sympathetic nervous system dominance and stress, and then liquid melatonin to get you into that deeper sleep faster. All right. So that's the first one. That's how we can improve. Now, what about metformin? Again, I'm not going to start using metformin. What will I use instead? A product called Berberine Plus. It's 500 milligrams of berberine, berberine and about 100 milligrams of cinnulin, which is the extract of cinnamon that's been shown to improve overall blood sugar levels. Now, you could use the GLP-1 tone product, or you can use the Berberine Plus. You would just use it. You would just get 1,000 milligrams a day of berberine, 500 in the morning, 500 at night. Some people do 1,500 milligrams. I think ongoing, if you're going to use it, 1,000 milligrams is probably a great way to do it. You could just do that morning at breakfast and then also dinner as well. Super simple, and it's been shown to help mimic metformin. It actually does a phenomenal job of mimicking that and improving insulin sensitivity. So that is that. Again, the GLP tone would help as well. And then for DHEA, very simple. We offer, and we, we offer our clients, 5 milligrams of DHEA. They take that twice a day. Now, Clinical studies show 50 milligrams a day, 100 milligrams a day. How much do you need to use? Well, you use the amount that your body needs. So you can run that stress immune metabolism test, look at your hormone levels. DHEA essentially feeds your hormones. And so if you need more, you can take a little bit more. If you're in your 50s, you'll probably take a little bit more. If you're in your 60s, you'll probably do 10 milligrams twice a day. So it's based on the individual, but this is very simple. This is very straightforward. Um, I don't need to use DHEA, but I will in the future. Again, I absolutely will, but my testosterone is still really strong right now. My cortisol's great, and so I don't need to use it because my labs say I don't, but I would have no issue using DHEA in the future to help improve my immune system, to help balance, balance inflammation, and much more. So that's a, that's a very simple starter plan as to how to boost HGH naturally, balance insulin levels more naturally, and then boost your DHEA. Very simple, very straightforward to do. So just remember that Aging is not a one-way street. You're not just aging every single day based on your chronological age. It's not the case at all. Some people age slower. So when I ran my latest rate of aging, I was aging at about a 0.67 or 0.69. Depends on the lab because I run multiple. And so when I look at that, okay, I'm only aging for about 6.9 months out of the year. 
or you could say 0.69 out of 10 if you wanted to look at it like that as well. Either way, I'm aging at a much slower rate. And I don't even have great genetics. I really don't. I just try to put in the work day in and day out, but my genetics are horrible. I mean, they really are in terms of inflammatory markers. So if I can do this, there's no doubt about it with your genetics. I have no doubt you can do it as well. So my goal for you, and I would say my challenge for you is this week is that just choose one area. What's one thing that you want to start to improve with overall inflammation and inflammation in the body? It might be looking at something as simple as just using DHEA, or it might be something a little bit more lifestyle based is I'm going to stop eating three to four hours before bed. Fantastic. That's a great first step. Whatever works for you, choose that, implement it over the next three to four weeks. You'll start to see small changes and they add up over time. If you've never read my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, check that out. That's basically diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance, scientifically backed supplements, and, and the success mindset. So it's like it's all the different steps laid out for you in one book. The book is also free. You just pay for the shipping. You can find that at stephencabal.com slash free book. But I'll also link up the study as well. So this study, um, officially, officially, when you're looking it up, TRIM stands for thymus regulation, immuno restoration, and insulin mitigation. So that's where TRIM came from. Hopefully this has been helpful. I'll link it up at stephencabral.com slash 3555. Take care, buddy. Have an amazing rest of the day.